Hi folks, so as I mentioned, as we lead up to the eclipse, before I do the eclipse video, and really for all intents and purposes, my last video, which was about Venus and Gemini, set up the eclipse really nicely, and had links to two other videos I'd done before that that continue to talk about the eclipse. So if you're dying to know about the May 26th eclipse, there's already a fair amount of material on this channel on it. The Venus and Gemini video, and then the New Moon and Taurus video, but even more importantly, I would say the Venus and Gemini video and the Mercury and Gemini video, because at the time of the eclipse, um, on the 26th, Mercury, Venus, and the Sun will be in Gemini, and the Moon will be in Sagittarius. So those Venus and Mercury transits talk about setting up the eclipse and what is going on as far as that is concerned. There was one more video I mentioned I wanted to do before the eclipse, and this is it, which is about Jupiter's brief entry into Pisces this year, currently. Um, and what that means, because at the time of the eclipse, this lunar eclipse in Sagittarius on May the 26th squares Jupiter. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of looking at um, separating aspects. What I mean by that is aspects that are already done, but the planets are still within an orbit of each other. If an aspect is done, what do I mean by that? I mean, if, let's just say that if the sun, if, if, Mercury and the Sun are going to be conjunct, and we give that an orb of about five degrees. So if let's just say the Sun is moving a degree a day, and Mercury moves a little faster, and at a certain point, Mercury conjuncts the Sun in the way that we look at the skies, and then Mercury starts to leave the Suns, no longer conjuncting the Sun, it's actually separating from the Sun, but within a certain orb, we'll still consider it conjunct the Sun. When the aspect starts separating, I don't, I'm less interested in it, with one exception, which is that when we come to a full moon, as I look at approaching aspects of the full moon, so if the moon is full, where is it going next? Roughly within five odd degrees. But I also look at where is it coming from, because as the moon becomes bigger, it gathers a certain amount of steam. So even if, even if, for instance, by the time of the eclipse on the 26th, the moon will have squared Jupiter, and the sun squared Jupiter, I think, a couple days ago, uh, on the 21st. So even though these aspects will have happened, as far as I'm concerned, they happen so close to a growing moon, to a growing eclipse, that we need, that, that, that I will consider it, because it's relevant to the story we're telling now. And the story we're telling now builds perfectly builds from the Venus uh, in Gemini uh, the transit that we were discussing, particularly the fact that the eclipses on the Gemini Sagittarius plane, the May 26th lunar eclipse and the June 11th solar eclipse, the May 26th lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, the June 11th solar eclipse in Gemini, even more specifically, the May 26th full moon lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, and the June 11th new moon solar eclipse in Gemini are both square planets in Pisces. Jupiter is in Pisces and Neptune is in Pisces. And I've mentioned, and I think it's worth mentioning again, that this idea of deception and or delusion are very much in the air. It is a, it is a kind of a sense of an awareness, an intuitive awareness, a red flag of something going on and particularly if you know where Gemini and Sagittarius and Pisces sit in your chart, there's some sort of a story going on there. There is the opportunity before you panic. I really must say there's an opportunity to use this Mercury retrograde that is coming up between the 29th of May and June the 22nd to be in an investigative phase. There are also some wonderful supportive transits between the planets in Cancer and the planets in Pisces. Right now, Mars in Cancer is going to trine Neptune and Pisces on, I believe it is, goodness, when is that? Um, sorry, uh, on the 27th, the day after the eclipse. So so there's, there's a certain amount of support there. There's, I'm going to describe the feeling as an awareness of hanky-panky, an awareness of the possibility of deception, but questions around, is someone deceiving me? Am I deceiving someone? 
am I deceiving myself? There's a kind of a, when we don't have all the facts on something and when someone is being snaky or deceptive or trying to pull something from somewhere or trying to be manipulative or trying to be controlling and so not giving all the facts, not playing all their cards openly, not, let's just say, not being decent. Then what our mind normally does, because the intuitive red flag is there, is understandably, it will try and explain it. And in that process, in the approximation process, it can sometimes be difficult to tell whether we're going to go fight a grizzly bear or an elephant, or whether the task involved is simply chasing a bee or a wasp out of a room. And our minds and our bodies and our soul, you know, we don't quite know what that combat is about. Well, these transits, while they are flagging the idea of something going on in terms of deception, that's not the only meaning of this transit. Look at my Venus and Gemini video to get a better handle on this. But, but these transits are helping you, will help you investigate um, through this process. You may wonder what this has to do with Jupiter in Pisces, and I will explain that in a second, quite a bit actually. Um, and also take action, and particularly taking action in the next four or five days as we lead up to the eclipse, because that's when there, we have some supportive, we have, you know, a kind of a what the hell is going on here. And most specifically, if I were to, if I were to really, it's a question of a loss of power. It's stepping back into your power and feeling like someone through this process is somehow taking one's power away. It doesn't have to be huge, but there's that awareness there of, you know, as I said, with Neptune creates this kind of fogginess, often to create some sort of a fated loss. But here's the deal with fated loss and gaslighting. I don't you you're not with these you're not meant to accept it with these transits you're meant to inquire you're meant to you're meant to, there's something about boundaries related to this eclipse in these transits both in terms of being violated and also a need to put some up and sometimes you know you have to be careful i read a fascinating i'm i read a fascinating article recently and i really do fall more in the forgiveness and resolution camp as opposed to the revenge justice and retribution camp but the, i read an article that made a very compelling case for how in certain cases the idea of being forgiving or noble or spiritual is its own form of gaslighting you know you're such a good person you're such a spiritual person you read all these books you do this kind of work you should uh, forgive that in its own way is a form of gaslighting. That in its own way is a form of deceit. What they're really saying is someone has done you wrong or I've done you wrong, accept it, be noble. And uh, it is a massive, you know, and you're like, suck my toes. Um, so so, so there, there is, it becomes important to know when the idea of forgiveness and letting go is an act of healing and when it is being strung in front of you like a carrot um, as somehow acquiescing to or not taking actions that someone else might be afraid of. So, you know, be nice can be, you know, as with everything, it's an everything and, right? It's night and day. It's good and bad as opposed to good or bad. You know, the presence of one in the absence of the other still means that the other is around because without the other being around, at least in our minds, what is in front of us would not exist. So the the very same, I, I find that whenever I espouse a principle, God or the universe is quick to show me when the opposite principle can be applied. So if the idea is do not lie, and you know, I'm thinking of Inglorious Bastards, the movie, if you are hiding people in your attic who are being persecuted and the SS comes in and is like, where are these people? Are you going to lie or are you not? Chances are you're going to lie. So, you know, it's one of these things where no, no, um, no formula, no saying, no principle, no platitude is without its opposite. And, um, you know, if someone was going to kidnap your child and steal them and, and you were holding on to them and you could do something to stop it, who who's to say how far you would go? You know, whatever your principles on a certain level. So, 
we're not talking about anything that extreme, hopefully, as far as you guys are concerned or I'm concerned. Uh, but we are talking about this question of what the hell is going on here? Is there some hanky-panky? If cards are not being played close to the chest, an awareness of snakiness is the way I would put it, but an inability to tell what is actually going on. And as I said, whether we're about to fight a grizzly or whether it's just a question of shooing something out of the room and being nice and asking questions and investigating and not being afraid of anyone making you seem crazy. Why are you asking this question? Are you okay? I'm so concerned about your well-being. I'm so, are you stressed? You know, those kind of gaslighty things. If it comes to you, keep it clean. As a friend of mine says, keep it clean and classy and just ask the question you need to ask and take the answer you get as revealing. You know, typically people will be who have nothing to hide will say no or yes, <laughs> but people who are, you know, it, 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 so just, but the process of investigating politely, decently, asking, not assuming, will reveal to you the nature of the threat. If there is one, what is going on in our own mind and our own projections based on any history or intuitive red flags and what exactly needs to be done with it. The time is now to deal with it. Why, you might ask? Well, because Jupiter has entered Pisces briefly. Now, let's talk about this transit. 11 and a half minutes into this fascinating video. Um, Jupiter typically spends about 30 months in one sign. Right now, it is doing this thing. This is the first year where it is speeding through a sign. So Jupiter entered Aquarius in the middle of December of 2020. It's gone all the way through Aquarius. It's moved into Pisces. It entered Pisces on May the 13th. And it's just going to make its way for a couple of degrees into Pisces. And then it's going to go retrograde. God help me. This is what happens when I scribble on June the 20th. So May the 13th, it comes into Pisces. June the 20th, it goes retrograde. July 28th, it goes back into Aquarius, and then October the 17th, it goes direct, and then on December the 29th, it comes back into Pisces. This year, I still consider a Jupiter in Aquarius year and not a Jupiter in Pisces year. But over the summer, middle of May to end of July, it's in Pisces. Well, Pisces is the sign where Neptune is sitting. Number one, the eclipse on the 26th is going to mean Sagittarius, which is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is in Pisces. The ruler of the eclipse coming up is Jupiter in Pisces. Pisces is ruled by both Jupiter, strong in its own sign, Neptune in Pisces, strong in its own sign. So the overall rulers and dispositors of the chart are Jupiter and Neptune, both powerful in Pisces. So whatever's going on in Gemini and Sagittarius is in direct conversation with whatever's going on in Pisces. Wherever these signs sit in your chart, what house they occupy and what those houses stand for, tell the story. And I kind of, you know, uh, you know, with Gemini, sort of who and with Sagittarius, what part, you know, as a sort of a where and and the Pisces is a what, you know, is the way I would put it. But don't, there's, there's just, and with squares, as I've mentioned, the faster moving planets in squares, and those would be the Gemini planets, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, the Moon, the slower moving planets, Neptune and Jupiter, which are involved in these squares, the slower moving planets are dependent on the faster moving planets doing their job to clear the stalemate and move things forward. So this is why I say that the power is on your side as you investigate and take action. If you don't investigate and take action, someone's going to... It, it's a tricky time, as I, I also warned, and I said, if you're planning to be deceptive in any way, just be careful, because with this, there's, there's, there's enough digging going on here. There are enough magnifying glasses here. There's enough room for expo... There's... There, mm, there, it's, a, it's a... I just... I just... I just wouldn't try it. Um, Jupiter spends 13 months in a particular sign, the personal planets, as they typically do every year, spent middle of February to middle of April or thereabouts in Pisces. 
Pisces is where we had eclipses in 2015 and 2016. And that is where you may have suffered a crisis in the Pisces part of your chart. So if you think back to crises, and even if you don't know where the Pisces part of your chart is and what house it occupies, if you think back to crises that occurred in 2015 and 16, letting go, being forced to let go of expectations how other people should be, letting go of your dependence on something, letting go of holding on to something, something being taken away from you, that kind of crises, 2015, 2016, then Jupiter makes his, makes a much-awaited entry over this summer and next year to regenerate, to heal this part of the chart. But the healing is dependent on clearing these deceptive cobwebs, okay? So the eclipse on the 26th squares Jupiter, but at the time of the Jupiter eclipse square, we have Venus squaring Neptune. Now that is a classic money relationship, theft, fogginess, uh, transit. Now, Venus, as it moves forward, interestingly, I don't know if I have this date on me, I hope I do, Venus, fascinatingly, trines uh, Jupiter. You know, right now these planets, right now the eclipse, uh, right now the eclipse squares Jupiter, but as these planets enter the sign of Cancer, Venus and the Sun, they're going to support Jupiter and they're going to support this new beginning. Venus trines Jupiter on June the 3rd. The Sun trines Jupiter on June the 23rd. So we have Jupiter getting some support, but that doesn't take away the squares that I'm more concerned about are the squares with Neptune. Venus square Neptune on the day of the 26th eclipse, the day after, but as far as I'm concerned, that eclipse. And then the June 11th eclipse squares Neptune. A retrograde Mercury, the Sun and the Moon square Neptune. So that the investigation of shady business continues as far as I'm concerned, June the 11th, August the 11th, till about August the 11th. That this, the summer is about, and it is extremely important that as these new beginnings start to take hold, this regeneration, this gift, this ending of a 12-year cycle and a start of a 12-year cycle, wherever Jupiter goes. I'm going to say that this cycle ends and starts next year, but for some people, it's over the summer. Whatever it is that Jupiter is trying to bring to you, wherever this crisis was in 2015, 2016, however it's trying to heal it, make sure that no one steals something or some part of it from you. That, in a nutshell, is what I want to convey. Crisis 2015-2016, Jupiter, a planet of auspicious new beginnings, as one astrologer coined it for me, which was wonderful. For me, an ending of a 12-year cycle, start of a 12-year cycle, removing something that is no longer relevant, Jupiter automatically knowing what is right for us and creating an opening, up to us whether we take the opening or not. But Jupiter are certainly the fates trying to come in and give us a lifeline and say, I think this is where you need to go. I think this is where it's going to help. But the awareness of monkey business that can uh, rob us of some of this joy and some of this happiness. It's a little bit like people when they know that something good is about to come to you start going, how do I capitalize on some of that? And they may have been preparing for this for a while, but whatever they were waiting for is in the wings now getting ready to come in. And indeed with Jupiter with Pisces is coming in. And so you've got to, Jupiter and Pisces is coming in to heal, to give a new direction, to give some clarity, to give some regeneration. Long awaited because the Pisces part of the chart, especially with Neptune there and all the transits that we keep making to Neptune, you know, it's a real drain. It's a real drag. And um, you've heard me. I mean, how many videos have I mentioned things like gaslighting and deception? You know, it's it's there. It's just present. It's something important is not clear for everybody. And we're all reacting and acting from a place of something not being clear. And so that just keeps compounding to this thing, especially personally. So, so Jupiter's entry into Pisces is trying to create this new beginning. And it's these squares that are happening right now, the slower planets are saying, Jupiter and Neptune are saying, make the faster planets do the work they need to do. Investigate, ask questions, set up boundaries, fight if you have to. 
but you don't have to go in fighting and accusing if you don't know what is going on. It's a little bit like preparing for a legal battle or legal case. You know, ask the questions or a little bit like a murder mystery or solving a murder or something where, you know, the FBI or the investigators will come in. They will ask questions and try to piece it together. Don't drive yourself crazy. Just be in a place of this is what I need to know and this is what's going on and put what needs to be put in writing and writing and, set, and watch people's reactions and behaviors. It could be that just by doing that, asking the questions, you chase the bee out of the room. Or you realize whether it's a bee or a grizzly and what needs to be, you know, nice and classy. But investigate. If you feel like something is smelling a little fishy, I don't think you're wrong astrologically. I'm not the only astrologer saying that either with these transits. Okay? I'm just very clear about the story that they're telling in the way that I read charts and what I see. So at the end of the day, Jupiter is trying to carve a new path and bring a gift. The gift may come next year. It may actually, all the work on it has already started. So you may find that conversations and openings, and Jupiter has a tendency sometimes to create endings and crises to create the new beginning it's trying to create. It can lay you off. It can create a crisis that prompts a set of conversations that enables a greater sense of understanding, and that creates a new beginning. It can, we've, all my clients I've talked to, myself, we've felt the Jupiter in Pisces entry. It has made its presence, and Jupiter works like the eclipses. Saturn puts us through the ringer, but it doesn't shock and surprise us. And it doesn't come in with, Saturn makes us work on ourselves. It doesn't come in with fated changes. The eclipses in Jupiter tend to work in a similar way. They, the eclipses will just pull the rug from under your feet and, you know, they can give you some great, they create quantum leaps of change and they create, they create big change. Jupiter comes in and creates a big change too, wherever it is spending those 13 months and, you know, creating an auspicious new beginning often is accompanied by an ending and there's something fated about it. You, you can't, con you, you, with Jupiter, you can work with it. But it's still something external and something godly that you're dealing with. So that work has already started in Pisces. It has already started. You must be paying attention. I, I'm sure you, it's already started. And so um, the groundwork is being laid for the gift that Jupiter is trying to give you in this part of the chart. But at the same time, with Venus squaring Neptune soon, Mercury is already squared Neptune once. It's going to square Neptune twice. Mercury retrograde inquire, 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 investigate, investigate, investigate. And then the planets as they move into Mars support this new beginning. At around the time of the May 26th eclipse, as I've already said, Mars trines Neptune. So you have the ability to ward off an attack if you need to as, you, as of the next three or four days continue. So do what you need to to be in this space with the understanding that wherever Pisces sits in your chart, and if you don't know, then going back to 2015, 2016, something is coming to create a new beginning there. It may be the way you want it to be. It may not be. Trust the king of the gods, Jupiter, to know what might be best or right for you, however painful some of that may or may not be or whatever that looks like. But at the same time, if you can feel a fresh wind start to blow, and fresh winds sometimes blow in ways, make the announcements in ways that are a little bit unsettling. But the idea with Jupiter, we're considering lucky breaks. We're considering a sense of adventure. We're creating, considering a sense of spontaneity. We're considering a sense of your own truth. It's as if Jupiter knows what you instinctively, hmm, here's what it is. Wherever Jupiter goes, it, and wherever the eclipses go, they, and we're right now in that phase, they, it's, the, it's one of the few ways in which we are led out of our inertia. So we may instinctively know that a job, a company, a home, a relationship, a situation is not for us. Now, it could be under the current guises that something behind the scenes or some sort of hanky-panky or some sort of thing going on. It's not always the case. It's more a question of us instinctively but being in a rut because we're human and we have our routines and our schedules and it's hard for us to disrupt them. This is why the eclipses come along and Jupiter come along to go here. Let me give you a push. 
you're gonna scream and shout and call for your mommy and do all the things that you do as a human being and pray and consult astrologers and read your tarot cards and but but with Jupiter especially there's an awareness of some sort of conversation you've already been having with your intuition or your higher self it could be something that is wished for it could have something as I said a risk of spontaneity and adventure pulling you closer to your truth so somewhere there's this wonderful regeneration starting to happen Remember, Jupiter is going to come back into Aquarius. So if the Aquarius parts of your chart feels unfinished, it is. Don't panic. After the end of July till December, that part of the chart is going to continue to get refurbished. Okay, you will have your new beginning there if you haven't already. Chances are you've had part one of your new beginning in Aquarius. There's a part two coming, end of July till the end of December. Then whatever happens this summer that Jupiter's coming to Pisces going to this is what we're going to do on Pisces. Pay attention. It's going to do that next year. Next year is also another year where Jupiter is going to spend most of the year in Pisces, but part of the year in Aries. And then after that, starting 2024, it's going to be back on its 13 months in the same sign routine. Okay, let me summarize 2015 2016 crisis in Jupiter crisis in Pisces. Whatever that crisis was for you. If you know where Pisces sits in your chart, you'll have a better and bigger sense of it. Could have been pretty big. And when it comes to eclipses of release, we're really looking at maybe having to let go of something, having to look at what we are attached to and holding on to that doesn't serve us in our forward moving path and being attached perhaps to behaviors and how we expect other people to be, which we kind of have to let go of in order to accept them for who they are and wish them well and let karma do the rest. Uh, I'm being a little wicked, um, if that applies to you. So so, so there's that particular aspect of it. Th that part of the chart has remained pretty triggered because that those crises were, were, were pretty foretelling. Now Jupiter comes in over the summer and next year to create a new beginning in that part of the chart, which could also mean an ending. However, the Gemini Sagittarius eclipses what's going on right now is bringing your attention to something, some fly in the ointment that could somehow hinder your enjoyment or full partaking of the gift that Jupiter is about to offer you. And so these eclipses or any red flags that you're getting right now about setting up boundaries, investigating, figuring out what's going on, really just eliminating what could be a drain. And you know, is it a romantic thing? Where are you giving your power away, my darlings? Where are you giving your power away? Where are you giving your, where do you feel like your power, where do you feel like you're dealing with a situation that could blow up and take your power away or distract you in such a way? It, that's really the question. That's where it comes down to. That's what you've got to examine and go, where do I feel, where, 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 where is this happening? Got it. What do I need to do or what do I need to investigate or what do I need to look at? You don't have to act in haste. And with Mercury going retrograde, Everything here is saying, wait, look at the details, let everything come through, get the answers. By the end of June, by all means, you want to start to, you know, just let the, let, let the eclipses and Jupiter do its job and shake the carpet around a little bit. One of the things I say about the eclipses is that God takes the wheel. But if you accept that, you've also then got to realize that God is sitting right next to you. And so you can have that conversation. If you became, become calm and still and get in conversation with spirit and make a resolution that you are not going to overlook anything, anything associated where your power might be taken away from you, anything associated with any kind of thievery, falsehood, or anything associated with ignoring opportunities to heal or receive the gift that Jupiter is trying to give to you in the form of an ending and a new beginning where there were crises in 2015 and 2016. As long as you resolve not to overlook the positive or the negative, especially of the next week, you might find that this summer, and this summer, starting now till August the 11th, but starting now, And as you head towards Wednesday, you know, the eclipse, 
there might be some sort of a revelation that's that that you know you do the proverbial mercury is still going you know something has to happen for mercury to go screech let me just reverse can we can we talk about this can we investigate that's what this week might bring all right i will leave it at that enjoy the jupiter and pisces winds of healing and regeneration blowing but again they're going to be a little bit eclipsy you know it's, make sure you're paying attention to where a gift is trying to be given to you if you like this video found it useful share it